Your personal vehicle disappears. Even though this was supposedly fixed in patch, it still happens. Hellfire! Give me that thing right now! Hell! As you can see, my yellow entity XF is still in the background. And then it's gone. And again here, I drive away, and then... Poof, it's gone. Another really annoying bug, and unfortunately not that very rare, is that trucks mostly just spawn out of midair. Giving you absolutely no time to react. Now this bug is pretty annoying if you're being chased by the police because, you know, if your car goes upside down you want to get out fast and get away, but you can't because you have to wait for it to be completely still. This bug is really annoying when driving. When you get a call, the phone pops up and then to answer it you have to press X. But since X is also the handbrake, as long as the phone is up you can no longer brake, so if you trying to break around the corner and then somebody calls, you cannot break and you crash into a wall. Now I understand that, you know, consoles have a limited set of buttons, but you know, they could have done at least something so that you don't crash into a wall when you get a phone call, because you know, I could have been going, you know, 200 kilometers per hour and then if somebody had called me, I would have crashed directly into a wall and I would die, you know. Now the reason that it didn't answer the phone immediately is because actions that require you to not hold a button will not be executed until you release said button. So, you know, when I'm using the handbrake, I hold down X, and then when I want to stop using the handbrake, I release it, and that's where the phone gets answered. The Rage engine uses a, a physics engine called Bullet for the vehicles and the objects. Uh, however, due to the very limited processing power on consoles, uh, when cars are far away from the player, the game removes the physics and uses a very simple animation system to drive them instead. Uh, and this causes various unnatural behaviors and great grief for the player. You'll see cars changing speed in an instant, turning instantly, park sideways, cross the highway, stop instantly, etc. For example, notice how this car moves slightly sideways before turning. Okay, so let me give you an example of what it looks like when this fake physics system kicks in. So this is how you would expect a car to drive around a corner, but when the fake physics system kicks in, it looks more like this. As you can see, instead of you know just going smoothly around the corner, the car just goes straight and then sideways and then turns around its center, uh, which looks very unnatural and very stupid. Now this bug was also present in GTA 4, albeit in a much less severe state. Basically, it seems like all the cars try to deliberately hit you at any chance they get, and whether it's uh, intentional or simply a, a, you know, bad, a bad spawning system, I don't know, but the fact remains that this happens more than I'd like. For example, look at this right here. The car's basically you know, just going down the road, and then I come by, and then he just suddenly, you know, decide to park. Now, the only reason that car stopped was because of the, the AI on the other side of the road. And this, look at this trucker right here. What the fuck is that? Now, let's have another look at that. You can actually see the game switching from the fake physics system I was talking about earlier to the real physics system. Uh, so. If you look closely, you can see that the car actually slows down, the black car slows down. Um, and that's not because it's braking, it's simply because it's switching from the fake physics to the real physics. And 
they use different speeds. Now here in slow motion it's a bit easier to see, you can actually see very clearly that it's going a certain speed and then all of a sudden it's just almost still. Now this switch from the fake physics system to the real physics system could actually be what's causing this car to all, all of a sudden just, you know, decide to park. Because maybe it's, it's tasks are getting reset or something, I don't know. But it's still annoying as fuck. Now this clip brings me to another thing. Uh, AIs don't yield for the player whatsoever. Um, you can be going down a road and then at some T-junction, some idiot can just be, you know, driving right out, right out in front of you and he won't care that you're gonna hit him. And the only reason this guy's not right here was to yield for the other AI car that passed him. Here are a few more examples of cars that just seem to deliberately want to try to hit you. When doing turns, they even seem to wait for you before they drive to make sure that they hit you. Look at this guy again. He's just waiting there and then as I catch up, then he starts driving. Another thing the AI is really bad at is switching lanes. Basically, when they switch lanes, they turn as fast as possible, like they're trying to avoid something. Which, uh, well... In this example, this guy is just trying to get into the, to the left turn lane, and he's just crossing me, and, you know, I don't really care because I'm in the truck. Uh, but, you know, if I was in a smaller car, I would care that he was gonna, you know, just crash into me, and you have no time to react. And this also causes him to almost lose control when it's wet, as you can see here. People also change appearance. For example, if you look at this character right here, it's a black female. But then if you lose sight of her, and then later catch up with her... Then all of a sudden, she's turned into a white male. Now, this is actually due to an optimization, but it could have been done a lot better. Basically, when you're far away from a character, uh, it's just a Dharma character, which is just a character with a very low poly model with no textures, and then when you get close to it, it gets replaced by an actual character with a random model. But the problem is that when you get far away from it again, it gets switched back into this Dharma character with, a, with this very low poly model. Uh, and then once you get close again, it just does the same thing it did the first time, it replaces it with a random uh, model. In GTA 4, if you damaged your engine enough, it would actually break down, and then if you were really lucky, you could start it again. But in GTA 5, brand new cars break down, and then you can't start them for like 500 years, and it's really fucking annoying. Let's go! This also brings me to another bug, or at least a lacking feature. In uh, GTA 4 you could leave the engine on so that you could make a quick getaway, but in GTA 5 you cannot. So every single time you get in the vehicle you have to wait for the engine to start. Because um, every time the character gets out it just turns it off. You cannot choose whether you want to turn it off or not. The fastest car in the game is the Adder with a top speed of 250 miles per hour. And the second fastest car, the Entity XF, uh, shown here, uh, has a top speed of 240 miles per hour. Not. If you go into the statistics menu, the game will probably tell you that your top speed is 200 plus miles per hour, and Social Club will say the same. Uh, the problem is that if the cars were really going that fast, the consoles would have to load and unload. Uh, the environment that much faster, and they wouldn't be able to handle that. So instead, they're only configured for uh, the fastest cars configured for 200 kilometers power, or around 120 miles power. Um, so to make you think that you're actually going that fast, Rockstar multiplies the actual speed by 1.75. So if you want to know your actual speed, simply take your top speed and then divide it by 1.75, and then you'll get your actual speed. Now let me show you what it would actually look like if you were really going 200 plus miles per hour. So first of all we need to figure out 
exactly how fast we're going here. Um, well, not exactly, but you know, approximately. Basically, I put a marker on the map, and then in the lower left corner of the screen, you can see how far is left. Uh, and then I basically use that to measure the average speed, um, and that will give me a rough representation of the top speed of this vehicle, which is gonna be around 200 kilometers per hour, uh, plus minus. It's actually configured for around 187 miles per hour, sorry, kilometers per hour, um, but it's gonna show around 200, maybe. There we go. 194 um, and that's good enough for you know, to get the approximate uh, top speed um, and then basically we'll use that to figure out how much to speed up this video to see how it would look if uh, you were going 250 plus miles per hour Okay, so we've driven 2 miles or 3.219 kilometers and it took us 59.666 seconds. So to get the average speed, we simply divide the distance by the time. So 3.219 kilometers divided by 59.666 seconds equals 0 0.053950323467013 kilometers per second. And to get that in kilometers per hour, we simply multiply it by the, the number of seconds in an hour, which is 3600, and uh, that multiplied by 3600 is uh, 194.22 kilometers per hour, or 120.7 miles per hour. Now, people have claimed various ridiculous speeds above 200 miles per hour, uh, one of them being 261 miles per hour, or 420 kilometers per hour. Another one claimed to have been going 316 miles per hour or 508.55 kilometers per hour. Uh, and that's just completely ridiculous. I mean, these people have absolutely no sense of speed. Um, and that 360 miles per hour, I don't really believe it because the fastest car is 200 kilometers per hour approximately. And if he had really been going 360 miles per hour according to Social Club, that means that his actual speed, uh, 316 divided by 1.75, would have been around 180 miles per hour, or 290 kilometers per hour, which is not possible considering the fastest car is configured for around 200 kilometers per hour. Uh, but anyways, I'll just take that too. Um, so first of all, I'll show you what it would look like if you were going 261 miles per hour or 420 kilometers per hour. Okay, so in the previous clip, we know that I'm going 194.22 kilometers per hour, and 420 kilometers per hour is 2.1625 times faster than 194.22 kilometers per hour. And we know this simply by dividing 420 by 194.22. So to see how it would look if I were actually going 420 kilometers per hour, I simply need, need to speed up the video to 216.25%. Now, keep in mind that because I'm speeding up the entire video, uh, all the other cars on the road will also go 2.1625 times faster. So had you actually, or had I actually been going that fast, um, I would pass the, the other cars uh, 2.1625 five times faster than I actually do in the following clip. So look at the road markings and the environment to get a sense of the speed. Okay, so the other speed that was claimed 
uh, was 316 miles per hour or 508.552704 kilometers per hour. So to find out how much I need to speed up the video, we simply do 508.552704 divided by 194.22, which is 2.6184 times uh, faster. Um, so I just have to speed up the, the video to 261.84%. And again, because I'm speeding up the entire video, all the other cars will also be going 2.6184 times faster. So if I had actually been going 508.55 km per hour, I would pass all the other cars 2.6184 times faster than I actually do in the following clip. So look at the road, mar look at the road markings and the environment to get a sense of the speed. Imagine when GTA 5 is released for the PC and everyone starts modding all the cars so they can actually go the speed uh, that the game says they're going 250 miles per hour. Uh, then the social club would say that your top speed is 437.5 miles per hour. Also, you see that car parked sideways on the road up there? That's actually a consequence of the fake physics I was mentioning earlier, uh, where the fake physics turn instantly and then all of a sudden switch to the real physics and everything just fucks up. And now to the main reason I made this video. The horrible AI, or more specifically, the horrible police AI. I cannot believe the Rockstar thought it was a good idea to release a game with the police AI in the state that it is in currently. I mean, it's the worst AI in any GTA game ever. It's not that it's bad, it's that it's so bad, it makes me want to put my finger through my eye, into my brain, and then whirl it around. For example, look at this. I mean, I don't know if they couldn't be bothered making proper firefights uh, or whatever, but they just, I mean, cops just randomly drop dead for no reason whatsoever. Now, and I can't believe there isn't a big outrage about this, but there is no patrolling police in GTA 5. You won't find police patrolling the streets like in previous Grand Theft Auto games. Um, if you don't have a water level, you will not find a police car on the streets. Um, if you lose your water level, you can look at a police car, then turn the camera th 360 degrees, and then when you look back, the car has despawned. Um, there is a glitch that if you're near the uh, the police impound, they will spawn, and that's the only place you will see a police car driving around on the, on the streets without you having a water level. But it's like they focused I mean, it's likely they deliberately made sure that the police would not be just patrolling the streets. The moment you lose your wonder level, the cops that were chasing you will, within uh, 30 seconds, usually less, will start chasing a random car. Uh, so you will not, s if you just follow them, you will not see them without their sirens on for more than a few seconds. And if you look at this clip, if I just play this clip again, um, I was just being chased by the police, you can see I'm losing my water level here, and then I turn the camera around and I look at the police car that was chasing me, um, and then I try to keep it in view, because I made this video to show you what actually happens. Um, so now I've lost my, uh, my uh, water level, and you can see the police car in the top right corner of the screen, um, and I keep looking at it, and then as you can see I drive past it, and then I immediately turn the camera around, and it's gone. It just despawned right away. Uh, and this happens every time. If you look, if you look at the police car and he doesn't, and you don't have a wonder level, the moment you look away, it just despawns. Now, 
this is not a patrolling police vehicle. This is a police vehicle that was just chasing me and I hit and then lost my water level and, and I followed him. Uh, just to show you what actually happened. Uh, like I said, if you don't have a water level, they're not gonna be just patrolling. They're either gonna just start chasing a random car or they're just gonna drive around cluelessly with a siren on. So they basically if they cannot find anyone to chase, they basically just switch the siren on, drive around clu clu cluelessly for no reason, and then turn it off and drive around again cluelessly for no reason, and then turn it back on and so on. So there's no... I mean, they never patrol. And that isn't even the worst part. I mean, in GTA 4, the police AI was so much better in every aspect. They would actually chase you, but in GTA 5, they just try to ram you. I mean, you can be going down the road at 200 km per hour, and then a car will come from the, from the opposite direction and uh, cut you off, even if that means that he'll die. As long as he can hit you, he's happy. Uh, and that, you know, that isn't the worst part. Um, like I said, they don't chase you, they just spawn 200 meters in front of you and then wait for you to drive by or they'll spawn uh, from the opposite direction. So this pretty much sums up a police chase in GTA 5. It's just not fun because you just you drive, then a cop spawns 200 meters in front of you and then another cop spawns in fr uh, 200 meters in front of you and so on and it just go like, goes like that the entire fucking chase. And it doesn't matter where the fuck you go, I mean, they always know where you are. You can be going down the, the most desolate road on the entire fucking planet, and they just happen to have police cars waiting in foxholes or whatever. I mean, you can have lost them of sight like a minute ago, and been, been going a, a completely different direction, and then hit somewhere, and then just coincidentally they'll have a chopper that just happens to search where you hit and then have patrols that just happen to spawn from this helicopter and just coincidentally happen to go in the exact direction that you are.
The police also have instant roadblocks. I mean, you can have just been getting the three star water level, uh, which is where they'll start uh, getting roadblocks, and then a few hundred meters in front of you, they'll already have a roadblock. And now I'm getting to the worst part. Um, you can have the car with the best acceleration and the cops still have the ability to pull up behind you and bump your rear. And that isn't the worst part. The worst part is that when the police bumps your rear, you lose control. And then you may say, hmm, isn't that realistic? Yeah, well, no, because, I mean, if you, if you bump the rear of a car, it's not gonna go off the road. I mean, you'd have to push the rear to the side like a pit maneuver. But what actually happens here is they couldn't be bothered making a real pit maneuver, so instead they just made the police cars bomb your rear, and then when they do, your car turns left or right. I mean, what the fuck is that? I mean, it doesn't get much worse than that. How lazy can you be? They couldn't be bothered making a real pit maneuver, so they just made the car turn. I mean, what the fuck? And if you look at this clip again, I'm actually trying to go left around that red car, but then the police car bumps me and the game decides that I should, that the wheels should just turn right. And if he had actually been able to get a grip on my rear and pull me off the road, I would have been going left there. Okay, let me show you that again in slow motion. So the, the cup car is about to ram me, so I open up the radio wheel to go into slow motion. And look at the front wheel, it just instantly turns left uh, the moment the cup car hits the rear. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? And this is so annoying because, you know, had, had it been an actual pit maneuver, you, you would have been able to use the steering wheel to correct it. But you cannot because the game just turns your wheel to the left and in that time you cannot control it. So just to clarify, at no point in this clip am I manually turning the wheels. And you'd also be able to see if I were because when you turn the wheels in the game, uh, they smooth to the position. But here they just instantly snap. And it doesn't stop there. When the police shoots out your tires, the wheels also turn left or right. Um, so again, they could be bothered making an actual simulation of a tire that is burst. They just turn the wheel and that's why you lose control. And again, at no point am I turning right. They shoot out my left rear tire and then the car just turns right. So here's another example where a, a helicopter shoots out my tire again and then the wheels turn all the way right. And here I regain control and then I have to n fight not with uh, a burst tire but with the fact that the game has uh, you know, taken control of the wheel and turned it right for half a second. I mean, from the very first time I experienced this, it was... it felt like... I mean, it doesn't feel like the tire is burst or that, you know, the police ram you off the road, it feels like a friend is sitting next to you and putting his finger on the on the analog stick to annoy you. Now here's the sad part. They cannot make a bus lose control. I mean, they'll try, but nothing will happen. So they made it so that if it's a bus, uh, the wheels won't turn. So here's the sad part. If they've tried and failed like 10 times, they will actually try to perform a pit maneuver, as you can see here. Uh, so they actually did make a pit maneuver, but they still decided to go with this crappy uh, rear bumping automatic turning thing crap technique, algorithm, whatever. Um, so, yeah. And this actually brings me to another thing that's crappy about the AI. I mean, they apparently couldn't make them drive properly, so what do you do if you can't make things drive properly? You give them perfect handling. So this means that they are actually able to pit the fucking boss. And in fact, the police will try to pit your car sometimes if you're going really slow. So I really don't see the point of this automatic turning when the police bump your rear. I mean other than uh, Rockstar wanting to annoy people. Now, the police AI doesn't just suck when in a car. 
they also suck on foot. Um, this is uh, what happens in GTA 4 if uh, the police spot someone hitting you. And this is what happens if the police spot someone hitting you in GTA 5. You a bad motherfucker, huh? Hey, get out hey, of here! Police! You hey, scum fuck of the earth, bitch. I'm peeling bitch. your wig back, son! You piece of so shit! So you hard, huh? Just lame as fuck! Oh, oh man. This is oh. Give me oh. Oh. No way! Oh. So as you can see, in GTA 5 they just shoot them, making it very easy to mock someone. You just walk into a police station, start a fight with someone, and then let the police do the work. But the police AI isn't the only thing that's crappy. For example, people will, you know, compliment your car, but then if you rev the engine a little, they'll get scared. And I'm sorry, fool! Now this bug right here is one of the reasons that it seems like cars are deliberately trying to hit you. Uh, as you can see here, if you look at the white car again, uh, I drive around the corner, you know, I'm not gonna hit him, but he thinks I'm gonna hit him and thus turns into my lane to try and avoid me. And that is also what happens here when this guy just decides to drive into me. It seems like he's deliberately trying to hit me, um, but in fact it's because he thinks I'm gonna hit him. And it doesn't matter whether it's a player's car or an AI controlled car. So this is how you'd expect the cars to drive. But in reality they drive like this. As you can see the red car thought that the green car was going to hit it and drove into its lane to avoid it. Uh, and the reason for that is that the AI only considers the instantaneous direction. For example, if you look at this still of an animation of two cars driving, imagine you're the blue car and you're going straight. You'd probably say that the red car is going to hit you. And that's what the AI in the game does. They only consider what they see right now. They don't they don't remember what happened before, but if you, you know, had seen the entire animation, you would know that the red car is never gonna hit you because, well, it's turning in a curve, so you know you're not gonna hit it. So here the green line indicates exactly which direction the car is going, and the other cars only consider that to figure out if they should avoid them. So every tick of the AI, the AI only considers exactly what they have in that very instant. So as you can see here, the green car in this instant is at a direct collision course with the uh, red car, and that's why the red car tries to avoid it. And this also explains why it's always the car on the outside of the curve that turns, because as you can see the red car is never on a collision course with the, the green car. <laughs> 